Okay guys, so we're here. I'm actually showing you some of my process um, in making this duet drawing I did a few weeks ago. I started it on my live. Um, I did the red one I believe, or pink or however you're looking at it. Um, but here I'm showing you the blue duet. I'm using Prismacolor markers and I'm starting off with the base of the lightest color. Um, I don't remember which one this is, so I can probably put it in there. I think I show it in here though. Um, but yeah, I just fill in the whole space and um, I sped it up pretty quickly. So you can see that I try to do that border just so I don't have any bleeding happening onto the portion I'm not working on. And then I fill in the rest. So here I'm a little closer, just so you can see what I was talking about, about doing the border and then filling in that space with the rest of it. So I'm just doing the inside of the do-rag, they're kind of floating, almost like ghostly. So if a head was in there, this is how it would lay, that I'm showing the comparison between the next step up in blue. Um, I like to do the monochrome drawings a lot actually, I don't do them as often as I would, probably should since I like them so much. but. Um, they're really satisfying <laughs> to do and just to see in the end result. You can see I'm kind of just blocking out where I want that gradient to start to blend. I didn't blend it just yet, um, but I go over the whole section again with that um, next darkest blue color and then I go with the even darker blue. Um, I have a lot more shades of blue in Prismacolor, um, but I stuck to these three throughout the whole do-rag. Um, just so that it wouldn't get too muddy and become too smooth because that is very possible. Um, and then I'm showing you the outside. So it's pretty much the same process throughout the whole thing. But um, yeah, it's just a matter of really placing the, the hues in different sections so that it doesn't become one flat piece um, and adding that dimension with the shadows. Yeah, <laughs> I really wanted to play up the um, the silkiness of durags, um, that the values that you get from having the light beam off of the like satin that you would have on your head is really important to me. I don't know why durags is a really fun subject for me. I used to only do portraits, but now I'm kind of branching out into more inanimate objects, and durags have been the the main focus in that. Just getting that like um, hem that goes down the middle, but I'm only tapping it in on the top and then going back for all the different folds and things for where the flaps would um, lay. Comment below if you like to tie your durag back. Are you the person that tucks it? Do you let it just hang off the side of your face? What's your thing? How do you like to wear your durags? I wear them mostly to sleep. I very rarely wear them outside, but I just saw a post on Instagram about um, how black women used to wear them when they were like working, just because they kept their hair out of their face. I guess it was similar to wearing headscarves today, but um, I thought that was cool. I never knew that before, like this week. <laughs> so this is uh, me stepping back and just taking a look at all the markers that I use. I ended up using four. I think the lightest one I ended up using to blend and um, I like seeing them all together. The Wurgy Biv Red Yellow Blue is like my favorite colors. Primary is really dope. I want to do a whole series of just those three colors one day. 